this thing on. Hey, I'm Damon Bungard, and welcome to another one of my projects. Now, if you follow along the channel a while ago, you saw a custom Mesquite Mallard canoe build that I did. Got a lot of comments on it. I'll, I'll link it above. And today, I got another fun project to customize the canoe because it's getting warm. It's turkey hunting season. It's paddling season. And as many of you know, I'm a big believer in using small portable watercraft to get the fun places to hunt, camp, and do other things. So in this case, I have a beautiful Esquith Adirondack here. And I've got rolls of bottomland vinyl and we're going to do a wrap so we're going to wrap the outside of this canoe and give it a whole new stealthy look should be pretty fun and pretty cool in the end so real quick some of the tools you're going to need for this i'll go through but obviously you're going to need the vinyl you can get this from mossy oak graphics you can get it in various sizes this is a four foot width and this is a two foot width and I'm hoping I can just use the four foot width and not have to have a lot of seams but we'll see um, you're gonna need some masking tape I'm gonna prep the surface just with rubbing alcohol um, the, the graphics come with a squeegee tool to get rid of any air bubbles this is pretty handy stuff 3m knifeless tape finish line this is kind of like kind of like tape with a line of dental floss in it and you put it down and then when you peel that dental floss it cuts the vinyl on a nice clean line without having to use sharp tools that said I'll still have a variety of tools uh, this is my 1791 kind of everyday carrier I got my, the tape measure on here I'll have shears uh, a sharpie for doing marking some things and a leatherman tool in case I need to use a leatherman tool um, and then lastly, it's, it's a worn day, so the vinyl is going to be a little pliable, but if needed, I can help it along with a heat gun. If I need to heat it up and kind of bend it around some contours. So, let's get started. Step one, I'm just going to, I already washed the canoe, the outside yesterday, got all, the, all this pollen off. So now I'm just going to wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and prep that surface. And then we're going to work on laying out, masking off some of the some of the graphics. Then I'm going to lay down the vinyl cut tape. Then we'll get to actually applying the vinyl. So let's get started. It's flipped over. I'll just do a quick wipe with my rummy alcohol. You know, a, a wrap like this is going to be best done on on boats that are not hitting a lot of rocks and that have a fresher surface. This boat hasn't been paddled much yet. Um, it's largely a flat water canoe. I'm not going to be hitting a lot of rocks with it. So, just because the vinyl, it, it will, you know, it can scratch and get damaged. So, you're going to largely want to do this on things that are designed for deeper water paddles. And, like, I'll be using this mainly on, on lakes and uh, deeper water, like the New River here, where I live. So... It's not like you can't hit rocks once you have the vinyl on there, but just expect you're going to scratch it and do some, some minor damage. But, and all I'm doing here is just prepping the surface now. Since it's got graphics already, these are stickers from a skeef, I don't want to damage them. What I'll do is next is I'll mask over that, and then I'll run the vinyl cut tape around it so that... Uh, they're, they're, they don't get peeled off when I when I pull back the vinyl. So. Next, I'll just mask off the places that, again, I don't want to have the vinyl risk peeling graphics that are already on, are, that are already on there off. I'm just gonna take some masking tape, and masking tape is obviously designed so that it can be demasked and not pull things with it with this adhesive. So I have a nice edge with the gunnels, and I'm just gonna kind of cover up. The ski logo on there, and I'll do this on the bow and on the stern on various logos that are already on the canoe, so that 
if vinyl does adhere over them, there's a buffer so that it doesn't peel them off. And then I'm going to put the, the cut tape around that logo. So it'll be nice and still displayed after the wrap. So now that that's on there, I can come in with the 3 and knifeless finish tape and use this as a guide and run this, run a bead around those logos. Once the vinyl's on, I can pull this and it makes me a nice cut line. So you can see this 3M cut tape, but it's a very thin film. And if you look very closely, there's a little bit of fiber in there. So basically, to get it going, you expose, you expose an end. Now you can see that fiber that's left. So that'll be kind of like the tag end that I'll leave hanging so that I have something to basically pull and then cut through the vinyl I'll lay down over it. Pretty neat stuff. Really helpful for making clean cuts on vinyl wrap. And I just got this off. This is 3M knifeless tape. Thought about Amazon. Well, the nice thing about this vinyl cut tape is it's very flexible, so it's adhesive backed. Just by putting my finger there, you know, I can make bends up and around things like this that still kind of flow with the graphics, so to speak. There you can kind of see now I've run the knifeless tape all the way around the gunnel and around all the mast areas, so now I'll have nice clean cut lines on the vinyl once I put it down. So the next step is the tricky part. How do we put a gigantic sticker on this thing? We'll find out. This, this particular piece of, of vinyl is 4 by 14 and this is a 12 foot canoe. So lengthwise is going to be plenty. The challenge is the taper on the bow and stern and how to kind of tie that in. It's probably going to have to cut and fold over itself, which is not a big deal because those are the high abrasion areas on a canoe anyway. And you kind of, a little bit of extra protection there is not going to hurt. But I'm going to fold drape here. Kind of center it up. Probably the surface area on a, on a canoe is widest point right here in the belly. And so I'm looking at how much vinyl there's going to be. And, it, and there is going to be a little bit of stretch. Again, it's out in the sun. I'm going to leave it in the sun a little bit because it helps it gain pliability. But that will come right to the gunnel. should be right about the exact perfect length for largely one piece for the outside. And then, you know, I'll have to trim away sections, but it'll be pretty cool in the end. We'll do some taping and make sure I can cut away some excess. So now I've got it draped, basically, with the vinyl. The backing is still on it. I haven't peeled that yet. And I'm just trying to, I'll kind of line it up and get it centered. Roughly, I know I'm going to have a, a certain amount of flex. Again, it's out in the, it's out in the warm sun today. The vinyl is going to move a little bit. So, but what I want to do is, uh, I want to cut off some of this excess, like there, before I peel the backing off. Because, um, well, I can do this for other fun projects, and there's no need to use it. So, I want to kind of butt this up right against. I'll make a measurement right to the middle of the, of the material at this widest part, again, the belly of the canoe. But I'm going to come around and tape it, and then I'll know I have a cut edge, I'm just, and I'll cut this, this other bulk material away. And I may use it for reinforcing the edges, the, the tips, the bow and stern, or I may just use it for, for other projects. I don't know. But for now, it's just holding it in place. As you can see, this right in the middle comes right to the gunnel. On both sides so which is really cool it means I won't have to have an underwater seam and that's what I really wanted to avoid but so if I can pull it off that'll be the goal 
right now I'm just going to kind of anchor it and figure out some cut lines so I can just remove bulk material so I'm not dealing with that when I actually do pull the back in. Taking it right to the gunnel. All I'm doing here is I'm kind of bending it around the gunnel and putting my tape on the edge of that gunnel so I know to cut kind of this way to, to just save the bulk of the material I can. I don't want to, I still want to over leave myself extra excess material so I don't want to be too precise about it but there's also no reason to waste all this nice material. The other thing I'm, I'm going to mark is the center keel line. The keel line is this, this bulge in the hull right there because it's a re as a reference point. So what I'm going to do is once I do the bulk peel of this backing, I'll kind of use this as a center line guide as we quote unquote drape it down over it. So I'm just going to mark this keel line with what you can feel. It'll help me with the reference. It's getting very hot to the touch, so I don't think I'm going to need a heat gun today. So any sharp shears will work for this, but it's time to do the trimming of, of the excess. Um, and this is just a step so I can save some material for other projects, but I'm using Leatherman Raptors. You just, any, any good sharp shear is, will do the job. And I'm just going to go in on the outside here. Well, now you can see it with the, with the bulk trim, initial kind of trim cut away. Now this has got good 3M controller backing on it. It's, it's good stuff. You know, I could wrap things like climbing sticks that I want. If there's something you want to see me out, out there do a wrap in this, put in the comments down below. But I'm thinking that around like tethered one sticks. That'd be pretty cool looking. So anyway, I'll find something fun to do with that, I'm sure. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my reference point on the center line tape here. And I'll make the mark. There, so that when I take this film off, I'm gonna actually now lay it, I'm gonna invert it. I'm gonna lay it upside down, try to get it in the same orientation, and then I'm gonna peel that backing, and then I'm gonna carefully try to lay it down on top with some help. like half, but I'm not totally making my life impossible. Okay, carefully lift this side, okay? And then we're going to flip this tape line on the keel that I want to try to so I got this. Ready? Okay. Yes. All right. See the keel line squat down? Mm hmm. That tape. Kind of be on that keel line. Look at look at the end of your, uh, the end of this room. Is it lined up on the back? <laughs> yeah. Go away. Okay. We're in the ballpark. The rest I'm gonna have to work with. Soon. Thank you. So I'll start on that side now with the squeegee working my way from the keel line down 
into adhesive and just working out wrinkles because there's going to be some. And the goal is to minimize how, how many, ever many there are. I'm in now is a, it's a bit painstaking, but it's pulling, stretching, and working out as many of the air bubbles as I kind of care about. Um, the reality is, uh, I'm not a great rapper, um, but um, this is going to be one of those jobs that falls under the it's not perfect, but it's perfectly adequate category. Um, so if there's a bad bubble, you can come back and use a syringe or poke it with a needle and squeegee the air out. You know, luckily on something like this, it's a camo pattern. Like, I, I don't, I personally don't really care if there's a little bit of a wrinkle here or something because it's hidden by the camo pattern. It's one of the nice things about wrapping things in camo. But, um, there's a lot of far more experienced vehicle type wrapping and other type wrapping services out there. So chime in, see a better way. You know, lifting, lifting the big, probably I, didn't, I shouldn't have peeled as much as I did, but it is what it is. Um, and now I'm just again slowly lifting and peeling and, and squeezing out. But I, got, I got some wrinkle here or there. Um, Butting it up against that gunnel where I taped. All right, well, there's half largely done. We got backing on this side, and I'm gonna try to do it in, in smaller sections from what I've learned from the other side. But it looks pretty good. Uh, no complaints, really. Um, I got. I'm gonna let it, you know, I can let it rest in the sun. There's some, there's some little wrinkles here and there. In my experience, if you almost let it again, let it rest, you can come back with a needle and kind of take those out and pop them out. But overall, that's me being pretty picky and it looks pretty darn good. So now to figure out the other side, I'm gonna have to roll it again and move slow. <laughs> I got a lot of the stuff worked out. I'm kind of let it rest, and and you know bubbles will form in the heat, and I'll pop them. And, but overall, it's it's as good as I need it to be. Um, and it's time to do the vinyl tape cutting. So let's see what happens here. Here's the tab. Turns work. I'm gonna give it some help. Okay, so there it's out of the way, and now I should be able to remove what was there for the escape logo. There you have it. I got a nice clean cut edge. Now where the logo was. Let me 
be a mask around it. And everything's fine. So I'm going to do this trimming now all the way around. You can see how well that cut. Cool. All right, well, there you have it. We have what started as a tan canoe is now a bottomland canoe via a vinyl wrap from Mossy Oak Graphics. So, you know, took some time, some detail work, and you got to be patient with the squeegee. And yeah, there's some wrinkles and some, there's some bubbles that'll sort themselves out over time. If you got any tips on how to do that better, I'm all ears. Do it. Let me, let me know in the comments. But I've never wrapped anything before, so it's camo. I'm ready to go turkey hunting from a canoe. Got any questions, comment below. See you next time. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see this, but I'll try to show some of the tools for dealing with bubbles because we've got like a really bubbly zone here and here and here and here. But basically, and there's a lot of tutorials on this, but as I said, I'm not a professional vinyl installer at all. But... Basically, you can have it out in the sun, or you can use a heat gun and kind of hit these zones. And if you just poke them with a needle, you know, then you can use, um, I'm not sure I won't hold the gun too much, but you just get a poke through there, and the heat helps build up air pressure inside, so then when you poke them, they just kind of flatten themselves out. So I'm just kind of going around and hitting them, the tiniest little hole, and you know these will these will smooth out for me. So again, I'm not a professional vinyl installer. It's camo. You know, I was willing to take this on because it's gonna be an abstract look anyway. You know, it's a canoe. I intend to use it, um, and it's gonna get damaged. Uh, if I hit rocks and different things, so I'll minimize that. But you know, it's easy to use the scraps to cover it up, and you can't even tell. So anyway, um, again, if you got any tips, I think if I were to do it over again, uh, you know, I was trying to do this, you know, on my own. I should have had help for some of the stuff. So actually, came out and helped, but I should have uh, probably hung the canoe and and let gravity not pull the film down on. I should have hung it on its side and kind of let it free float in the air, I think, and then uh, smooth around that way. But, uh, you know, again, first time, uh, no regret, just fun project. Um, and, but let me know in the comments uh, what you think. I would have done it different, but looking pretty good there now.